Quiet on the floor. At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees please leave the main floor of the chambers? We have additional sitting upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of January 23rd, 2020. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumble. For all those that can, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Very present. Empress Samuel. Present. Ayala. Barron. Present. Morelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Here. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Gibson. Here. Jonai. Grudenchik. Ayala. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Koo. Cohen. Here. Koo. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Lewis. Here. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Present. All right. Listen, maybe Perkins. Computer in my, in my back office should work. Print it back Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. No, just 8 by 11. Rivera. Present. No, just 8 by 11. Rodriguez. The letters on it, that's all. Rose. Okay. Yeah. Rosenthal. Maybe, you know, Here. 8 by 11, but Salamanca. Torres. Okay. Great. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Present. Valone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Dr. T. Kenjetsu Nakagaki, spiritual leader of the Buddhist Council of New York, located at 376 Broadway in Manhattan. For all those that can rise, please rise. Right. So first, uh, please stand with both your feet steady. Uh, let me uh, lead the meditation. Relax your body, close your eyes lightly, breathe out, and then slowly breathe in. As you exhale, let go of your worries, fears, anger and grief. 
Then as you inhale, let love, light, life, and luck come to you. As we celebrate the Lunar New Year this weekend, let us remember that we must keep our mind and spirit wholesome and fresh always. When our mind is good, our words and actions will become good. This is the year 2020, which is 2020 Peace Circle, Peace Circle. So let us practice peace and let the circle of peace expand, filling our society with love, light, life, and luck. As a Hiroshima Peace Ambassador and Nagasaki Peace Correspondent, I would like to remind you that this year marks the 75th anniversary of Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings, which were the result of inhumane weapons of mass destruction created here in the New York City during the Manhattan Project. I sincerely hope and pray that uh, through our actions and words, we as New Yorkers can start a new Manhattan Project of Peace from New York this year of double peace circles. Amen. And thank you very much. And uh, peace to you all. And a happy new year to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nakagaki. We appreciate your message of peace. Certainly a wonderful way to begin the new year. And I'd like to now call on Council Member Chin to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you, Majority Leader. I am proud to welcome Reverend Dr. Nakagaki, the President of the Buddhist Council of New York, founded in 1985 to foster dialogue, cooperation, and unity within the Buddhist community in the New York City area, as well as to organize events that promote education of Buddhist principle and interfaith dialogue. Um, the council's home is at 376 Broadway, right in the heart of my district. Thank you for your work to promote peace, dialogue, and understanding for all of our community. And as we begin this new Lunar New Year and a new decade, we will dedicate ourselves to promote peace, kindness, and fairness in our city. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Council Member Chen. So, uh, I would like to make a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Thank you, Thank you again, Council Member Chen. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Brennan. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of December 10th, 2019 be adopted as printed. Messages and papers from the mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me, M205, city debt and reserves. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. On M205, uh, Madam Majority Leader, they received order printed and filed. M206, TLC appointment. Petitions and communications. <laughs> okay, there are no communications and no petitions or communications. Land use call ups. M207 through M209. Coupled on a call-up vote, and at this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote, and all of the items 
uh, on today's land use calendar. This is just on the land use call-up calendar. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Levine. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Mizell. Menchaka. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Rosenthal. Yes. Yes. Salamanca. Yes. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. I'd like to vote yes on all land use call ups, and with your permission, uh, I'd ask for unanimous consent to vote yes on all coupled uh, general orders and items on the calendar. I vote aye. Thank you. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Cumbo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative and zero negative. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. I want to thank everyone for being here for today's stated meeting. On Monday, I joined many of you and fellow New Yorkers to celebrate and honor the life, legacy, and impact of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. His work, as we know, is clearly not done, especially here in New York City. We have segregated schools, a soaring homelessness population, and an affordability crisis that makes this city a struggle for many, many of our citizens. We must continue his fight for equality and justice here in our city and whenever we see oppression. I also want to acknowledge that yesterday we marked the 47th anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision by the United States Supreme Court. Unfortunately, the right to choose is being challenged in too many places, and we must ensure it remains in place for each and every American, not just for those who live in New York City or New York State. And as we do at every stated meeting, we remember those we have sadly and tragically lost to 9-11 related illnesses. I'm sorry to say that today we have four first responders to remember. NYPD Sergeant James Bast and NYPD Detective Maureen O'Flaherty were both lost to 9-11 related cancer. Detective O'Flaherty passed away on November 28th of last year, but it was just recently announced she was 57 years old. Sergeant Bast died at the age of 49 years old on January 14th. We also lost Alfred Clay Ludlam, who served with the National Guard on September 11th, and Richard Edward Hanrahan, who was an EMT who served down at Ground Zero. If we could all pause for a moment of silence for Sergeant Bast, Detective O'Flaherty, Alfred Clay Ludlam, and Richard Hanrahan.
Thank you. I'd also like to acknowledge that Monday marks International Holocaust Remembrance Day, where we'll be commemorating the millions of lives that were lost during the Holocaust. Monday also marks the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. I know that Councilmember Espinal uh, just got back from a trip to Poland where he visited. We mark these occasions knowing that anti-Semitism is a cancer that is infecting many countries around the world, including the United States, and sadly, even here in New York City, we have seen the cancer of anti-Semitism that has been spreading. Today and every day, we stand with Jewish New Yorkers and Jewish people around the world against hate and against anti-Semitism. As we continue to mourn the memories of those lost, we honor those who have survived the Holocaust and, we are, uh, and who are with us still today, and we say, never forget, never again. We will also be voting on an important resolution in just a few moments by Councilmember Deutsch that commemorates International Holocaust Remembrance Day throughout the city and a resolution that promotes Holocaust education because we know education is the key. The council's also sadly losing a member of our administrative services division. Cheryl King Lawson, who we love, is retiring after a long career here. We are so grateful for her service. And is she here? Is she, stand is she with us? Is she with us today? I don't see that she is, but I really want to thank Cheryl for her long service to the City Council, and we wish her the best. I also want to congratulate two special New Yorkers who were named in this year's class of Baseball Hall of Famers, Derek Jeter and Marvin Miller. By any standard, Derek Jeter is one of the most amazing baseball players in the world. He is unanimously loved by Yankees fans and anyone who appreciates the game. I want to congratulate the captain and the Yankees. And lesser known, but equally powerful in how he changed baseball was Marvin Miller. Miller was a Bronx-born, Brooklyn-bred union leader who was instrumental in creating Major League Baseball's Players Association to represent Major League Baseball players. He gave players a sense of dignity and reminded them they were not there for the sport. They were people who had rights and needed protection as well. He will be honored posthumously in July with Derek Jeter. New York is a union town and a baseball town, and we're so proud of both of these men and New Yorkers. Before we dive into our legislative agenda, I want to just put on the record and say a big thank you to Andy Byford the president of New York City Transit, for everything he has done for our city. It may be one of the toughest jobs in the world, running the subways and buses, and he did an outstanding, outstanding, outstanding job. Any elected official who worked with him would tell you that. He got to know community leaders. He showed up at the hospital or in courtrooms when transit workers were assaulted. He worked well with union leaders. He worked well with elected officials. He rode the subways and buses every single day wearing a name tag that said, hello, my name is Andy Byford. In two years, he has turned the system around. It is a sad day that he is leaving. Uh, he felt our pain as commuters and he worked to make the system better. And so I am grateful to Andy, we will miss you. And last but not least, a very happy Lunar New Year in the year of the rat, to all of those who will be celebrating on Saturday. Now let's dive into our legislative agenda. Out of the Finance Committee, the Council will vote on the following items, a pre-considered resolution that will start the legislative process for approving the extension and assessment increase of the downtown flushing bid in Councilmember Peter Ku's district. He's worked very hard on this, and Peter, we're grateful for your hard work on this, and I know the people of Flushing are as well. We were just at the wonderful uh, Flushing Chinese Business Association uh, dinner just a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I really want to thank you for your leadership on this. We're also going to be voting on an Article 11 property tax exemption in my district at 319, 321 West 38th Street, which will construct 11 new affordable rental units. 
Moving on, the council will vote on the following pieces of legislation. First, the council will be voting on the resolution I just spoke about by council member Chaim Deutsch to honor the Holocaust. To combat hate, we need to educate. This resolution is a step in that direction and so important right now as we deal with this alarming spate and crisis of anti-Semitic cancer that has spread in our city. Uh, Pre-considered resolution 1225, sponsored by Councilmember Deutsch, will recognize January 27, 2020 as Holocaust Remembrance Day and the week beginning on January 27, 2020 as a citywide week of Holocaust education. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Balkis Mirig, Leah Skripiak, and Kevin Katowski. Now, next, we have a piece uh, from the Civil Service and uh, Labor Committee, and this is by our chair, Chair Danique Miller, Introduction 1785, a very important piece of legislation. I want to congratulate you, Danique, on this really important bill, which will extend health insurance coverage benefits to surviving family members of deceased municipal employees who died as a natural and proximate result of an accident or inju inju injury sustained while performing duties for the city or who died because of a condition related to the attack on 9-11. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Newshat Chowdhury, Kevin Katowski, and Kendall Stevenson. Next, the council will vote on a government operations piece of legislation by our government operations chair, Fernando Cabrera, introduction 991, which will authorize the Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings to dismiss a violation enforced by the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission pertaining to a defective vehicle light or lights. Oath may dismiss the violation as long as the driver or owner has fixed the light no later than one day after being issued a violation and provided proof of correction, such as a statement of correction issued by a state inspection authority or auto repair shop, along with the TLC summonses to the TLC. And I want to thank the staff, Daniel Collins, Elizabeth Cronk, and Emily Forgione. The council will also vote on a bill to protect consumers who may want to pay in cash. Increasingly, retail and food stores have refused to accept cash and allow for only credit or debit transactions. This practice punishes the underbanked. We don't live in a one-size-fits-all city. Our economy needs to be open to all New Yorkers. Introduction number 1281, sponsored by Councilman Richie Torres, who has worked very hard on this for the last year, would prohibit food and retail establishments from refusing to accept cash from consumers. This bill would also prohibit establishments from charging cash paying consumers a higher price than those using a credit or debit card. And I want to thank the staff, Balkis Mirig and Leah Skripiak for their work on this. Next, the council will vote on a bill to address the lack of affordable, diverse retail space and prevalence of storefront vacancies in the city. The rise in commercial rents and the increased presence of large chain stores is felt most acutely by our city small businesses and the retail crisis we see in empty storefronts across New York City. To understand the problem of vacancies and challenges faced by mom and pops, the council passed a series of local laws last year to gather data on the city's commercial retail environment. We will continue to work on legislation to address small business concerns. And we have introduction number 1408B, sponsored by Councilman Rafael Espinal, which will require the city to conduct a neighborhood retail needs assessment for sizable development projects that receive significant financial assistance from the city. Where a need is determined, commercial space could be offered at below market rent to small businesses that meet such needs for goods and services in the neighborhood. And I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Stephanie Jones and Noah Meixler. Finally, the council will be voting on a package of legislation that aims to close loopholes in our city's lead laws. Sadly, the days of lead poisoning are not over in New York, and it should be because lead poisoning is entirely preventable. Although New York City banned the use of lead paint in 1960, we are still seeing cases of New Yorkers who are impacted by the effects of lead in buildings. This is especially true of children who are most at risk of problems associated with lead. In 2018, nearly 4,000 children, 4,000 children were flagged for eleva elevated blood lead levels. That is unacceptable. That is why the council took 
immediate action last March to pass 10 pieces of lead-related legislation designed to strengthen the city's Local Law 1 of 2004 by our colleague, who has always been a leader on this, Councilmember Bill Perkins, who deserves an enormous amount of credit for his leadership. And it's also known as the Childhood Lead Poisoning Prevention Act. There is no safe lead level, and the following laws, we hope, keep pace with the most up-to-date practices and standards to better protect New York families, especially children. The first bill, introduction number 420B, sponsored by Councilmember Costa Constantinides, will focus on the issue of lead in our parks throughout New York City. This bill would require the Parks Department to test for lead concentration levels in areas of parks under DPR jurisdiction that contain exposed soil and are used for active play or passive recreation whenever a capital project occurs in such area. If the test finds that a bare soil area has a lead level at or above the level set forth in Title 40 of the Code of Federal Regulations, DPR, must cover, replace, or otherwise remediate the area. I want to thank Christopher Sartori for his work on that bill. The second bill, introduction number 904A, sponsored by Councilmember Carlina Rivera, targets the issue of lead in pregnant persons. For pregnant persons who test positive for an elevated blood lead level, the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene would be required to conduct an investigation to identify the potential sources of their elevated blood lead level. The bill would require the agency to monitor the child after birth for elevated blood lead levels and to proactively assess whether the apartment where the child resides contains any lead paint hazards or unsafe lead paint conditions. DOHMH would also be required to conduct outreach to new and expecting parents regarding the availability of inspections for peeling paint or deteriorated subservice or underlying defects in their apartment and to provide them with information about blood lead testing for children, unsafe construction or renovation work practices, and the availability of inspections for such practices. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Z. Emanuel Halu, Megan Chen, Tirza Nasser, and Austin Branford. Next, introduction 919A, sponsored by Councilman Richie Torres, would require that within five years of the bill's effective date or one year of a child moving in, a thorough inspection of a dwelling unit <clears throat> be conducted by an EPA certified inspector and include a specified inspection protocol. It would also require home improvement contractors to show that they are EPA certified to ensure they are prepared to follow lead-based paint-related safety standards. Next, introduction number 891A, sponsored by Councilmember Stephen Levin, would expand the meaning of multiple dwelling for the purposes of lead laws to also include private dwellings where at least one unit is not owner-occupied. As currently drafted, the requirements to investigate and remediate lead hazards in dwellings only apply to multiple dwellings, excluding certain smaller buildings where residents may still be at risk of lead exposure. This bill would result in these smaller buildings being held to a similar standard protecting more people. And finally, introduction number 873A, sponsored by Councilmember Margaret Chin, would require schools under the Department of Education jurisdiction to conduct regular surveys and inspections of certain spaces for lead paint, of lead-based paint hazards, the results of which would be made publicly available and delivered to parents and guardians. The bill would also require HPD when conducting certain inspections to determine whether there has been a violation of the requirement to remediate lead hazards when a unit turns over. Further, it would establish a presumption that a building owner who is unable to provide a record of having remediated lead hazards at turnover has violated the requirement to do so. I just want to reiterate for the council members here and for anyone who may be watching, the, the, the staff at the City Council is the best staff. We have the smartest lawyers and policy analysts, and Tirza and Austin and Zay and Megan and uh, Jeff and Laura and everyone who worked in these bills have been working on these bills for longer than two years. We did a package a year ago. We're doing a package now. They're working on another package. They have been relentless in trying to protect the most number of children possible in New York City by pushing the envelope on these bills 
and the, the staff that has worked on this, I want it, they don't know the number of kids that they've protected through their incredible hard work, and I want to give the staff here a round of applause for their work on this lead paint package that they've done, the second package of work in helping children across New York City. I want to thank all of them, and with that, Madam Majority Leader, I turn it back to you. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. As no members have signed up, seeing none, report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, Intro 1785, Health Insurance. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, Intro 1281, Cashless Payments. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, Intro 420B, Soil Lead Testing. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Preconsidered Reso 1227, Flushing Bid. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 1228, Transparency Resolution. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 602 and Reso 1232 tax exemption. Coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Intro 991C, Oath Violations. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, Intro 904A, Lead in Pregnant Persons. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intros 873A, 891A, and 919A, Lead Based Paint Removal. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Small Business, Intro 1408B, Retail space. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders, and at this time, I'm asking for roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. With particular congratulations to my colleague, I, Dunnick Miller, on the passage of intro 1785, I vote aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. I vote aye on all. Borelli. Aye on all except uh, intros 1281 and 1408. Brennan. Aye. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I'll make it really, really short, but I want us to uh, remember our, our fellow Puerto Ricans. I, was just, I just got back from Puerto Rico last week, uh, especially in Juanica and uh, the surrounding towns, uh, the areas were uh, devastated. Uh, they're still in need of help, uh, but especially mental health, uh, chaplains, uh, and the sort. Uh, so let's please uh, uh, remember them and appreciate everyone uh, who uh, supported my bill, uh, 0991, <laughs> uh, to help our taxi drivers. And a congratulations to all my colleagues. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chin. I first wanted to uh, wish everyone a happy and healthy Lunar New Year. Invite all of you to come down to my district to celebrate. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Cohen. Constantinidis. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Permission? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, Reso 1225 uh, will for the second year in a row acknowledge International Holocaust Remembrance Day in New York City on January 27th. Additionally, it will establish a citywide week of Holocaust education, urging educators and parents to broach the subject with the students and uh, children. Growing up as the son of Holocaust survivors, it was ingrained in my identity that par my parents had lived through un unimaginable horrors. Although, like many survivors, they didn't often talk about specifics, their experiences during the war had a significant impact on our family. Knowledge of the atrocities that my parents and millions of others suffered through is just a generation ago is ever present on my mind. It is an extremely personal endeavor of mine to ensure that our children and our grandchildren and the future generations never forget what happened during the Holocaust. We all know the saying, those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it. Baseless hatred, unfounded bias, and anti-Semitism were all factors in what eventually led to the genocide of six million Jews. 
As a generation that lived through the war and is dwindling, and at a time when we are seeing a rise in violent anti-Semitism, it is, is, is more important than ever that we face this crisis head on. We have a duty to ensure that young people are knowledgeable about the Holocaust. If you want to equip the next gener generation with tools they need to fight bigotry and build a peaceful future, then we need to educate them about the consequences of prejudice and mistreating others. We cannot afford to lose the memories of those who survived the Holocaust. The lessons of the past are lessons for the future. Uh, thank you to my Jewish Caucus colleagues, particular Council Member Karen Koslowitz, for their partnership on this legislation. Thank you, Speaker Johnson, for your consistent efforts to increase Holocaust education and fighting anti-Semitism. Thank you. How do you vote, Council Member? Uh, I know. Thank you. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. We're voting today on intro 1408, which will mandate affordable rents for commercial space and affordable housing developments. This legislation is a part of a broader conversation around how to keep rents affordable for small businesses in New York City. Just as we have set-asides to address the affordability crisis for tenants, we must have set-asides to tackle the growing vacancy crisis for small businesses. When developers receive tax breaks for building affordable housing, they can still turn large profits by renting out ground floor commercial space to big box stores and chains, instead of our local mom and pops. While a neighborhood may gain more affordable units, the commercial spaces in these new developments can still lead to secondary displacement because of the strain they create on local businesses. Affordable housing developers have to take a holistic approach to what their footprint in the neighborhood is going to be. These developments give opportunities for low and mid middle income residents to stay put in their communities and should be offering the same stability to small businesses. In order to protect the integrity of our city, we have an obligation to protect all of those who contribute to its, to its rich cultural landscape. Uh, with that said, uh, I vote aye. Eugene. Thank you. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye on all. Jonai. Pass. Gorenchik. I vote aye on all, and I want to thank uh, my colleague and the chair of the Jewish Caucus, Chaim Deutsch, for his words today. Um, he is the son of survivors. Uh, regrettably, in my family, there were none, except for the people who lived already here in the United States. Um, so we remember um, the Holocaust. May the memory of the six million always be for a blessing. With that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Aye on all. King. Ku. I don't know, and I also want to wish everyone a happy Lunar New Year. Uh, if you have time, uh, you can come to join our parade this Saturday at 11 a.m. on Union Street, Flushing, uh, Union and 37th Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Levin. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Um, I want to thank uh, Speaker Johnson uh, and my colleagues and uh, all staff on uh, the, the lead legislation uh, that we're passing today. Um, I want to acknowledge Councilmember Bill Perkins for, uh, for sponsoring the bill in 2004, um, which really demonstrated that thoughtful and aggressive city legislation out of this body can have a real impact. Um, if you look at the data, um, the key inflection point over the last 25 years was in fact that legislation in 2004 which changed how this city addresses lead poisoning. Um, in fact, it, it followed on a, on a prior legislation from only five years earlier, um, but, but really um, um, changed the paradigm. Um, and uh, what we're doing today is building on that um, because as the speaker said, um, lead poisoning is entirely preventable. There's not a single, there's no reason whatsoever why a child should have lead exposure. Lead's been banned in this city uh, for 60 years um, and has been banned nationally for, for close to 40 years, or over 40 years. So um, there's no reason in the world why a child should be exposed to lead. It's some, every place that a child is exposed to lead, somebody is responsible. 
for cleaning that up. Somebody was responsible prior to that lead poisoning for cleaning it up. Um, so we're here today to say that we are going to continue, this body's going to continue until um, lead poisoning is uh, eradicated here in New York City. Um, I also want to acknowledge um, my colleague Chaim Deutsch uh, on his resolution recognizing uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day and Holocaust Education in New York City Week. Um, it is vitally important that our young people understand uh, what happened in the Holocaust, see it in the context of genocides throughout history, knowing that genocides continue up until this day and um, around the world. And so um, it is, it is, uh, it's incredibly important that we do not, those of us that don't um, know the past are doomed to repeat it. So we must uh, always uh, continue to educate our children. Thank you very much, and I vote aye on all. Levine. Vote aye on all. Lewis. Aye on all. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Permission to explain my vote, please? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Madam Majority Leader, Dr. King said that all labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. 1785 is how we honor this excellence. Intro 1785 is how this city demonstrates its value and how we as a city value the service of every single one of our municipal employees, particularly the brave civilian responders who answered the call of 9-11. Introduction 1785 extends health insurance benefits to the spouse and children of any municipal employee killed while performing their duties. It also recognizes the heroic efforts of civilian workers who answered the call during 9-11 by providing health benefits to the families should they contract a condition developed as a result of, of the loss of their loved ones from 9-11. The passage of this bill is a, is a big win for the dedicated municipal workforce that makes the city run each and every day and ensures that all of our dedicated civilian civil servants will have the peace of mind that they richly deserve by knowing that their families will be cared for and provided the health insurance and they will endure if the tragedy should strike in the course of their duty. I'd like to thank Speaker Johnson, um, my colleagues for voting on this and the members of the uh, civil service and labor team of uh, Malcolm, Nizat, Kendall, Kevin, and Brandon. Um, thank you so much, and I employ my colleagues to vote yes. Moya. Aye. Perkins. I want to vote aye on all and yeah. also uh, express appreciation for the speaker recognizing the horror of lead paint poisoning in our communities and look forward to continuing to work with him and my colleagues and this council to make sure that all our children and families are safe from that tragic experience that so many have experienced. Thank you. Miller. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. <laughs> Just want to thank um, everyone for their support as we are approving and voting on these next set of lead bills. It's shocking that in 2020, children and families in New York City are still being exposed to poisonous levels of lead. But this council has taken real leadership to combat this failure with passing bill after bill, and I'm so thankful to the speaker, to the staff here, especially uh, Zay, to Jason Goldman, to my legislative director, uh, Jeremy Unger. And as co-chair of the Women's Caucus, I'm proud that we're voting on this bill that will ensure that the city conducts thorough investigations when pregnant mothers test positive. I am looking forward to a lead-free NYC. And congratulations to all my colleagues with bills in this package as well. And, and to the many others that we'll be passing today. Uh, thank you so much, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rodriguez. I will get back. 
You'll pass. Rose. Rosenthal. Um, with gratitude to my colleagues, uh, Council Member Chin and Council Member Ku for uh, the very um, delicious way of celebrating the Chinese New Year. Thank you for that. And congratulations to all my colleagues with the lead bills, extraordinarily uh, extraordinary to Council Member Rivera and others. And also with gratitude to my colleague, Council Member Torres, for his bill on um, uh, no longer uh, allowing cashless uh, food establishments. I appreciate his work on that. So with that, I still vote aye on all. Thank you. Salamanca. Torres. Aye on all. Traeger. Permission to explain my, my vote? Permission granted. Uh, so just building on uh, comments by Councilmember Rosenthal to commend the leadership of Councilmember uh, Chin and Ku as well, not just for the celebration we have in the Council for the Lunar New Year, but I remember when I was still a teacher and we had policy in place where I had to mark students absent for observing their holiday. And thanks to leaders like council members Chin and Ku, uh, we now have an official holiday for schools on the Winter New Year. And I just want to publicly say that and thank them for their leadership and for their support. Also on the issue of lead, uh, there was this council that stood up and demanded that not just certain classrooms but common spaces in schools were tested as well. So this council will be very proud on its record of protecting children uh, in the city of New York. And to my colleague, Councilmember Torres, who continues to speak up for the voiceless and continues to make sure that all people are heard. And I just commend him and all my colleagues on their bills. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Valone. Van Bramer. Jaeger. May I have the excuse to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> Today, we are voting on intro 1281, uh, and I agree with some of the aspects of what the bill intends to accomplish. I don't think any store anywhere in the United States should refuse to accept American currency. But I also don't think that it's our job to tell businesses in this city how to run. And I really don't know what it is that we think happened when we were loaned the titles that we have by the people we represent that makes us think that we have the right to tell businesses how to run on matters not related to public health, public safety, but simply our own preference for what we think is smart or right or fair or non-discriminatory. For example, I like Coca-Cola. Many people do. We walk into a store, they only sell Pepsi. Are we going to rely, are we going to require that they now carry Coke? Walk into a restaurant, they don't have butter on the table. Am I going to require that they do? Or what if they only have butter on the table? Are we going to make sure that we take care of those who can't take lactose and have margarine instead? We're inserting ourselves into the business of business in a way that we don't have the right to do, in my opinion, although obviously, based on the vote tally, there are a number of people here who believe otherwise. But I also want to, in the last couple of seconds that I have, point out that the first penalty imposed on a business that fails to comply with this law <coughs> is no more than $1,000. The second penalty and thereafter is $1,500. So as we know, the city of New York never weaponizes our statutes. They surely will never take one of our statutes and walk around the city looking for businesses that aren't complying so that they could slam them with a thousand dollar ticket just for walking in the door. And I look forward to 10 months from now, one month after the nine months, when we start getting the calls from the businesses that are getting slammed with these summonses. With that, Madam President, I vote aye on all, with the exception of intro 1281. Thank you. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Matteo. Uh, no one 1408, no one 1281, and permission to vote yes on all land use call-ups. Thank you. Permission granted. <coughs> Jonai. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. First, I want to con congratulate Council Members Chin and Ku and wishing all a happy uh, Lunar New Year. I also remind all of my colleagues that we must keep the people of Puerto Rico in our hearts and prayers 
they're still recovering from the hurricane um, and now to be faced with a second natural disaster. Uh, the people of Puerto Rico um, need our help and our assistance, and I hope that we will rise to the occasion again by opening up our doors for those that are seeking relief uh, here in the, the city of New York. Um, I want to congratulate uh, Council Member Kayim Deutsch on um, the remembrance of the Holocaust. It, we need to be reminded of this, so never allow it to happen again. So to the Jewish community, um, we will always remember the tragedies and the atrocities that were committed against you. As we move forward to a lead-free uh, New York City, I'm pleased to see that we have not excluded NYCHA from this requirement. NYCHA is the single largest landlord, and we have more children that are being poisoned by lead paint in NYCHA facilities than any other properties out there. So I'm not only pleased to see that they're included and going to be held to the same standard and accountability as we protect all of our children, but most importantly, the most vulnerable, and those are the residents of NYCHA facilities. I echo some of the concerns of 1281A, and not that the intentions are not good, but the penalty that these small businesses are always subject to for not complying with rules they may not be aware of. And I caution my colleagues in trying to do good, to trying to do good that we often find ourselves punishing and penalizing the very groups that we're looking to protect, and that's our small businesses. So I do support 1281 in the intentions. I just remind all of the penalties associated, and we should further give warning before we give punishment of fines. So I vote all on aye. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. First of all, thank you, Council Member Bill Perkin, for being the pioneer on what we are standing today, the removal of lead paint. I remember being an activist, not a council member, and being here at the step, facing a lot of opposition from real estate, having the lawyer, the Northern Manhattan Improvement Corporation that worked with you and the council at that time to draft a bill to remove lead paint from residential building. Now we are extending what you started, and I feel that we have a big responsibility to also make NYCHA accountable for the removal of the lead paint to be done by professional, to be done by professionals. We did it when we include the law that may HPD, may, may everyone who do removal or lead paint from residential being done by professional. But we didn't use the same language on the NYCHA part. So we need to be sure that when lead is identified in any NYCHA apartment, those workers have to be trained or retrained to be sure that they do the proper job. So let's continue expanding that requirement for all lead paint be, be, be removed by professional. And with that, I vote aye. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 1281A, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 1408B, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. The revised land use call-ups vote is 46 in the affirmative and zero negative. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. If members have signed up to discuss today's resolutions, we will call on them at this time. Members have yielded their time 
for the resolutions, and now I will go right into reading today's resolution into the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on today's res resolution should register your vote with the clerks at the dais. Pre-considered resolution 1225, resolution recognizing January 27th, 2020 as Holocaust Remembrance Day and the week beginning on January 27th, 2020 as a citywide week of Holocaust education in New York City. All in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion. And we will begin with Council Member Torres. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to respond to uh, the comments from my colleague, uh, Council Member Traeger. Uh, Jaeger, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, th there is a huge difference. Uh, first, I think the notion of questioning government's right to regulate business is just simply an absurdity. There are regulations of business at every level. I, I would encourage my colleague to familiarize himself with the modern administrative state. The question is, is the regulation in question have a rational basis? Is it arbitrary and capricious? The fact is, here in New York City, there are 780,000 people who are underbanked. Right? There are hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers who have no bank accounts, who have no access to debit or credit, and therefore have no means of purchasing goods and services in an increasingly cashless marketplace. And so ensuring that those vulnerable New Yorkers have access to goods and services in a marketplace, in public accommodations, is a legitimate policy goal. I will confess to you, it is an expression of my policy preferences because that's what we do in our society. Most of the laws we enact are an expression of our policy preferences and our values. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite confused by what I took to be a, just an attack on my integrity as a legislator. This was a good faith attempt to ensure that more people have access to goods and services. And this bill was carefully crafted. If there were businesses that have grown accustomed to a cashless business model, we allow those businesses the option of installing a, a cash conversion machine so that they can continue to retain the efficiency benefits that come with a cashless business model. So this was carefully crafted. This bill strikes a thoughtful balance between equity and efficiency. Um, and I stand by it, so thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Torres. We'll go to Councilmember Ku. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, today, I'm introducing a resolution, Re Resolution 1229, uh, calling the federal government to pass the Adoptee Citizenship Act of 2019. This bill will close a loophole in the Child Citizenship Act of 2000 that prevents international internationally adopted children from receiving U.S. citizenship, despite being legally adopted by U.S. citizens. This issue concerns adoptees from all countries uh, in America, and in particular, those from Korea, as they account for one of the largest internationally adopted groups in this country. Many adoptees who grew up in American homes in American families never even knew they weren't American citizens until they applied for a job. Then, to add insult to injury, many learned they could even be deported. Indeed, many have been deported. Often the reasoning behind the lack of status are simple oversights or missing documents. And while the government attempted to ratify this issue in the past, he left out those children who, already, who had already turned 18 by the time the law went into effect. Simply put, we need to put an end to this injustice. I ask my colleagues to join me in supporting this resolution, calling for the passage of the Adoptee Citizenship Act of 2019 so that we can finally give our adopted Americans uh, the support citizenship they deserve. Uh, we have in our presence uh, Ms. Min Sun Kim. Uh, he's president of Museum of Korean American Heritage. And he's also, she's also a former president of Korean American Association of Greater New York. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll now hear from Council Members Barron, followed by Rodriguez, 
followed by Eugene. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. As has been mentioned, we did celebrate the birth, what would have been the, the 95th, 91st birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King. And just to call attention to some of his legacy, it was in 1962 that Dr. King was labeled by the FBI as the most dangerous man in America. And then in 1967, following his pronouncements against the war uh, in Vietnam, he was ostracized and said that he felt betrayed by many of the leaders, including some within his own circle. But today, of course, with hindsight, uh, and those who are engaged in the battle for social, ju social justice and civil rights, we see Dr. King as a man of commitment, conviction, and courage. He was a visionary, not just a dreamer. He was a visionary who thought of matters beyond the immediacy of his own initial advocacy and dared to venture beyond the local and national injustices to this day and to speak out against the evil tentacles of militarism that, perpetrated, uh, that are perpetrated by the United States and claim the lives of innocent people in foreign lands. And one of his <coughs> quotes that is most precious to me is the one that says that the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. And he says that intelligence plus character, that is the goal of education. And that gives me a segue into calling attention to the centennial celebration of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority, an international black sorority founded at Howard University in 1920. Original founders, as has been cited by my colleague previously, um, Carnegie, who mentioned them in a plot that he presented, were Arizona Cleveland, Cleaver, Pearl and Neil Myrtle Tyler, Viola Taylor, and Fanny Petty. And they are based on the principles of scholarship, service, sisterhood, and final womanhood, and they are a progressive organization that seeks to address the ills of poverty and prejudice. And I'm proud to say that as an undergrad, I did pledge Zeta Phi Beta sorority. Thank you. Congratulations, Councilmember Barron. And I would now like to call on Councilmembers Rodriguez, Eugene, Levin, and then Menchaca. Thank you, Majority Leader. First of all, thank you to all the colleagues that became co-prime of the Municipal Voting Rights Bill. They are Councilmember Menchaca, Drone, Espinal, Cabrera, Chin, Cohen, Kelos, Mille, Van Bremen, Levin, Reynoso, Rivera, Yala, Lander, Conegui, Adams, Empress, Samuel, Samuel, Levin, Lewis, Powers, Rosenthal, Diaz, Combo, Eugene, Public Advocate Miller, also supported by the Brooklyn Board President, Eric Adams, and Manhattan Board President, Gary Brewer, as also Council Member Perkin, Council Member Richards, Council Member Constantinide, Council Member Torres. The U.S., the, when we look at the, according to the U.S. Code Title 18, it says Section 61, Section 611 say, voting by aliens, non-citizens are authorized to vote in local election if allowed by state. However, non-citizens are barred from voting in the following office, presidents, vice presidents, U.S. Senate, U.S. House of Representatives. I live from 83 to 2000 with a green car. I wash dishes, I drove a taxi, I work in a factory, I became a teacher in 93, I taught hundreds of students, I was a co-founder of school, I held many election, many candidates from David Dinkins to Assemblyman Espaya to Councilmember Linares. I contribute, I pay taxes. As I, as I lived those years from 83 to today, there's close to one million New Yorkers who pay taxes that deserve to have the right to elect their citywide leaders. Thank you, everyone. I'm very proud of the borough coalition that we have, NWACP, the National Justice, more Immigration Coalition, 43 groups, and all of us together. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rodriguez. Now we have Councilmember Eugene, Levin, Menchaca, and Yeager. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Majority Leader. I would like to uh, speak about Intro 1858. Calling, uh, the, uh, 
for the administration code of the New York City to be amended in, in relation to signs that are posted at the entrance of New York City Park to ensure that they are visible at night. As I speak today, there are a large number of uh, honest and hardworking New Yorkers that are issued summons for being on city park land after closing hours. In many instances, the people who are issued the summons were unaware of the park hours due to the sign not being visible in the evening hours. Anyone visiting a city park knows all too well that many parks do not have operating hours that are posted permanently and that uh, the wording is difficult, if not impossible, to read at night, making matter even more difficult and confusing for park visitors is the fact that the hours are of operation are not uniform. The revised administration code should clearly make certain that park hours be displayed and luminous lettering and posted in such a manner that someone approaching the park sign will immediately see them clearly. It greatly troubles me every time now one of my constituents inform me of being issued a summons for unknowingly being in the park after hours. We have a large number of residents who struggle to make end meet in New York City. And many of them, the same people, receive someone for violating a posting that they couldn't see. I ask my colleagues to support this legislation. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Levin. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I just wanted to uh, follow up on the speaker's remarks about Andy Byford um, and how effective uh, he's been over these last couple of years in, um, in, in directing New York City Transit. Um, uh, and I, I, as I said in the pre-stated press conference, I take the 7 train every morning, which was uh, one train that had the signal upgrades done, and I rarely wait more than a minute or two on the platform before the train arrives. Um, I also want to acknowledge Jimmy Van Bramer for, uh, and, and other uh, council members for advocating for, for that uh, to happen. But um, I do hope that the MTA and New York City Transit are able to effectively um, carry out the plan that, that Andy Byford has helped develop. Um, and with regard to uh, 1281, um, I just want to uh, uh, associate myself with the comments of, of uh, Councilmember Richie Torres on, um, on the validity of this legislation. Um, you know, there are, uh, as he said, 700,000 New Yorkers that are underbanked. Um, they don't have access to a debit card. They don't have access to a credit card. Um, perhaps we should be doing more at the city level to get more people banked. But there are still going to be tens, if not hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers that won't have access to that. Um, we have a, a responsibility in this legislative body to make sure that they have access to all the goods and services that anybody else has access to. Um, and uh, if they currently don't have access to those goods and services, um, then that is uh, uh, that is a uh, that is a shame, and it's and it's something that we have every responsibility to correct. Um, so I don't see it as an undue intrusion of government. It is just ensuring that people have a fair shot at all the goods and services offered in this city. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Menchaca, finally, and then Councilmember Yeager. Thank you. I want to continue and start right off where Councilmember Levin spoke to the bill around cash, really access for cash opportunities at retail stores and say that there are multiple pieces to this that we have to consider. Uh, I want to second everything that was said by Councilmember, uh, the chief sponsor, Torres. What I also want to remind people that this conversation and what this bill did was also lift up conversations around surveillance that each of these cards, and anytime you go and purchase anything on a credit card or on anything with a technology, financial technology chip, uh, that data continues to be collected by 
many different companies. That conversation is connected to something that you all know here around a financial technology chip on IDNYC. We're in the middle of those conversations. The mayor's office continues to push uh, other allies in the unions to uh, bring a financial technology chip to IDNYC. I am against that, and many of you and my colleagues are. Um, but that, that's a conversation that also needs to be had when we talk about cash, to, uh, the cash economy. Next, I want to talk about 1867, uh, and Councilmember Rodriguez, my, my co-prime sponsor on this bill, uh, and I, and so many of you are also in support of restoring the rights of our community members, green card holders and folks who have work authorization to participate in our democracy. And so I hope you can all join in this conversation. This is gonna be a complicated conversation to restore those rights and to allow for our city to embed that voice into our municipal elections. And this is a game changer for us. We've seen so much of that already in participatory budgeting. In my district alone, over 30,000 people have cast votes in participatory budgeting. All uh, or a majority of those have been cast in non-English ballots. That's what we're talking about. That's what we need to do. Let's do this together. I can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Councilmember Yeager. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I want to be very clear for uh, the gentleman who uh, may have been confused. First of all, I appreciate the gentleman's suggestion that I avail myself of the opportunity to study law. Uh, thank you for that. Um, and secondly, no integrity was attacked here today, and if he thinks otherwise, he ought to review the tape of my remarks. We are imposing a penalty on businesses that fail to comply of up to $1,000 of summons on the first go-around. The first time they get smacked with a summons, it's going to be up to $1,000. I think we all know that up to means 1000 because that's the way the city does it. So they're going to look for a new revenue stream, they're going to find it, and it's going to be in the pockets of the small businesses that are making business decisions right now that they choose to accept credit cards and not cash. Are there legitimate reasons for why businesses make that choice? Sure. Do I want businesses to take cash and not to refuse it? Absolutely. I think it's wrong and I think it's dumb. But if they're making the choice, they're making the choice. I'm not assuming that we never regulate business. But as I said before, there's a good population of the United States, of the world, that is lactose intolerant. Should every restaurant that offers butter on the table now be forced to put margarine next to it? Is that a requirement so that we are not discriminating against those who can't tolerate lactose? Where does it stop? At what point do we say this is that important? Okay, that's where it stops. We're not going any further. It's just on the cash. Should we be changing the tablecloths in restaurants from colored to only white? so as to not discriminate against those who are colorblind. At what point do we say we're not going to regulate businesses to the point where we are stepping on their throats, as I believe we're doing today? And that's my point. And thank you very much, Madam President. <laughs> thank you. The revised land use call-up vote is now 47 in the affirmative and zero negative. And we will now have closing remarks by Speaker Corey Johnson. The stated meeting of January 23rd, 2020 is hereby adjourned. Thank you.